The global nuclear war can commence in three ways, and it's beginning, and please remember this, signals directly, the intensity and the danger it has on ordinary citizens. It is very important to understand the first signs, and to take appropriate actions in order to protect yourself and your family in the best way possible. The three scenarios are Scenario number one A terrorist group supported directly or tacit by a country is manufacturing and deploying a dirty, low-capacity nuclear bomb. Scenario number two A rebel general or a mentally ill submarine commander decides independently to start a nuclear war. Scenario number three A full organized attack against another country to neutralize a future threat. In each of the above scenarios the time for finding a shelter, the shelter type, and the necessary resources are going to be different. So let's start with the less dangerous scenario. Scenario number one. A terrorist attack. A terrorist group can in theory, develop a low-grade nuclear weapon, with the potential to detonate it in an urban area. Whether it is possible to create fission, what is the chemical reaction used to amplify the explosion to multi-megaton capability, or to use it as a dirty highly poisoning weapon it is debatable. What is certain is that there are over 400 cases of nuclear material smuggling, perhaps the most relevant is the case of Leonid Smirnov, who stole over 3 pounds of military-grade plutonium and tried to sell it on the black market. To have a general idea of the devastating effects of such a quantity of nuclear material it is relevant to look at the little boy effects on Hiroshima. There, a nuclear bomb containing roughly 140 pounds of enriched uranium, created a fireball of 2.2 miles in diameter. At a maximum efficiency such a bomb could create an explosion of roughly 3,000 tons of dynamite equivalent, and a radiation area of 6 to 10 miles in diameter. From a strategically point of view this is low damage for a multi-million people country. In such a case the probability of two bombs to be detonated in the same city is very low. Nevertheless such an attack would demand a counterattack on the country supporting directly or indirectly such an attack. The possibility of a global nuclear war in such a case would be limited, but existent because of the geopolitical alliances in place at this time. If this is the case the actual nuclear war would commence after at least 24 hours after the first attack. The shelter required in such a case would be a temporary one made to stand high levels of radiation. Food and water would be distributed without serious limitations and government agencies would reliably help with the evacuation. An underground basement with food and water supplies for a period of two weeks should be enough to ensure survival. Water would be the most important resource required, followed by food. For exact details about the quantity and quality of this resources please see episodes 3, 4, and 5. Now let's discuss scenario number 2. A mentally ill or a rebel general or submarine commander in charge of a nuclear arsenal could initiate a nuclear strike. In such a case multiple intercontinental ballistic missiles will be launched. The time for countermeasures from the attacked country will be very short and as a result multiple hits, if not all would be made. Such an attack would be focused on strategic multi-million people cities and military bases. The ICBM in usage right now have preset targets and multiple warheads. It would not be unusual to have cities hit by multiple warheads. This scenario would require a change of priority when discussing resources and shelter. The shelter should accommodate your family for months and be resistant to blast and radiation. Ideally the shelter should be under 6 feet of ground and include its own independent water and electricity supply. Such an attack would require a rapid counterattack what would result in an escalation of force, up to perhaps a total nuclear arsenal usage. In such an attack current defense policy in all nuclear countries would require a similar attack in terms of force. The escalation of force is possible but is not required, this is the reason why such a scenario would not necessarily mean extension of human life on Earth. For example the most advanced ICBMs carry up to 10 warheads what can have a potential explosion power of 100 kilotons each. One warhead would create a 2 to 4 mile fireball, kill everything in a range of 2 to 3 miles and produce 50 to 60 percent casualties for an area of another 3 miles. The 
radiation would kill 25% of the people living in the open for a distance of up to 50 miles, depending on the pattern of radiation fallout. Please see Episode 3 for radiation-specific data. Scenario number 3. In this scenario a global organized nuclear war commences with full acknowledgement of the parties involved. In such scenario over 10,000 warheads are launched and this would provoke what most scientists call a nuclear winter. The radiation fallout will kill up to 90% of the people surviving the first blasts, the only survivors would be the ones who prepared for such a scenario, and people in isolated locations. For surviving such an attack, shelter, food, and water would be the first priority, and the chances for survival would increase with supplies of vitamin C and omega-8 trans fats, this are critical for long-term survival. Such an event would make living on the surface impossible for the following five years and would require keeping the morale and fitness of the people in the shelter high. Preserving hope is crucial in this case. The food types would be very limited, electricity and double-way communication with the exterior would be necessary, as well as the technical knowledge, what is available in the rest of the season 1.